Google's John Mueller talks about usability, YouTube addresses content moderation bias, ChatGPT goes alpha on your web browser, Google leaks a new gold verification badge and finishes rolling out their April reviews update, and Meta has a mega glitch and causes some accounts to overspend. Hello my SEOs, my name is Kiko and let's talk about those stories here on this episode of The Rundown brought to you by PosiRank.com. Matt Harper of YouTube's trust and safety team recently discussed in a new video about the difficulties of enforcing their rules and regulations on the world's largest video sharing site. In the video, he discusses a wide range of topics including adhering to policies, biases, and subjectivity, and the impact of those policies on creators. And while they didn't get into any nuances and specific details, he does recognize that while they try to do their best, some things may fall through the crack. Some creators may get violations for no reason, and sometimes it looks like they're not consistent. However, if you were to ask any creator, they would probably say a lot of the times it's just not consistent. When it comes to bias, he points out those creators that aren't adhering to guidelines and policies, not that it's any particular bias or fault of the platform. Really, the interview didn't say anything specific or offer more guidance on what to do to keep you from getting flagged, other than follow the rules, which is something all creators know, even if they violate them. So there's the interview. So now you don't have to watch it. And ChatGPT is beginning to roll out their much anticipated plugins for users aiming to help them browse the web better. And although they are still being tested, the release of their alpha version is necessary for testing and improving for the MLM AI to work effectively. So what does that mean? That means expect problems and wrong answers. So if you use them, check your work. Many users have already reported bugs and bad query returns. However, that is expected and many people are happy to be guinea pigs for this. And I'm with them because this is way easier than doing medical studies or donating plasma for research. My arm still hurts when I see needles. The alpha web browser ChatGPT 3.5 plugins will only step in if the browser needs to complete a task like a quarterback calling an audible or an actor getting their stunt person in for them. However, users can ask it to answer if they want by asking it to use a specific plugin like Expedia, for example. Basically, the AI command equivalent of I want you to want to do the dishes. It's not enough that you did them, I just want you to want to do them. Thank goodness I bought a dishwasher. Check and mate. And while many of the plugins are still in their alpha phases and have a wait list for the developer ones, like coding, many users are happy to help and with as many times as ChatGPT goes down, they will have all the knowledge base they need for it to be in beta soon. And finally, Google's John Mueller recently answered questions about the proper number of product review listings on a page during a Q&A on Mastodon Social. With Google's product reviews update finally finishing last week and their new helpful content update, it's time we all find out just how many product reviews per page is acceptable and helpful for rankings. And one user asked, what was the right amount? Is it two, five, or 30 being the max? And John Mueller said that it basically comes down to usability. Site owners should consider the right number of reviews that will keep users engaged and provide the best interactions. Making sure that your content and reviews meet Google guidelines and policies while also providing the right experience for users. In essence, he answered the question by deferring to the guidance already given and that Google doesn't consider just one thing like the number of reviews as a large ranking factor for pages, but many things and site owners should look at the entire usability of their site. In essence, he basically gave the it's not you, it's me of content answers. Seriously, it feels like that at the end of this week that there was nothing but people pleading the fifth in the news. I mean, I expect that from Congress, but not from tech. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not surprised at all. Well, as it turns out, Meta has a little explaining to do, although we probably know they won't. Facebook advertisers are concerned about a glitch that caused some accounts to overspend by up to four times their daily budget and experience higher than average CPAs. While Meta has yet to make a statement, they did post in a Facebook advertisers group that the issue was caused by an automated system, which has since been resolved. Advertisers are still uncertain about what caused the issue and how Meta plans to make it right. As a precaution, advertisers are advised to check their ad campaigns and pause any that are overspending. Well, obviously, right? Why keep it going? In other news, Google Ads is reportedly testing a new gold verification badge for advertisers. 
Although Google has not released an official statement, the badge was noticed by Alex Kubica, who posted about it on Twitter. The Google Verification Badge is part of Google's ongoing advertisement verification initiative, following the introduction of blue verification marks and blue badge-like labels. The new badge indicates that an advertiser has been vetted and approved by Google, which increases click-through rates and overall performance. Man, that's a lot of badges. People's pages are going to start looking like a four-star general service ribbon. Oh, and speaking of updates, Google's April 2023 reviews update has officially ended. So if you have a web page that contains recommendations for products, services, destinations, games, movies, or other things, now would be a good time to look at your analytics. And if you feel that you might be hit and don't know what to do, Google has published a guide called Write High Quality Reviews to help publishers understand how to identify a good quality review, which is something I talked about in the last episode, and the TLDR is write high quality content. And finally, Alphabet, Google's parent company, has reported a second consecutive quarter of declined advertising revenue, with YouTube's revenue dropping by 3% year over year to 6.69 billion. Google is betting on new growth areas, including AI and short form video, to drive a recovery. They're focusing on YouTube Shorts as their answer to TikTok, along with connected TV, commerce, and subscription services, and plans to significantly overhaul search in ways that will affect advertisers and publishers. Despite the sluggishness, Google still beats analyst expectations on earnings and revenue. As an alternative to third-party cookies, Google is testing AI-powered advertising products, which it claims are not as affected by the loss of popular targeting tools. Well, my SEOs, that's all the news I have for you on this week's rundown. My name is Kiko, thank you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow.